Hi there, everybody. I'm ABC Action News meteorologist Greg D. Wanted to give you an in-depth uh, update on Elsa. I'm in for Jason Adams this morning in the ABC Action News Weather Center. Uh, he'll be taken over by, by noon today in case we have to do updates hourly throughout the day and into this evening. Uh, Dennis will come in this evening as well if we need to update you on the storm. So here's the latest, a 65 mile an hour tropical storm really hasn't changed much overnight in terms of intensity, but there have been some changes that are not apparent just in this update. So number one, the pressure has really gone up. And during an overnight pass from the Hurricane Hunter aircraft, they actually found that the old center had moved. There's a new center that reformed a little farther to the east. And uh, that's caused a little shift in the actual position of the storm. Thunderstorms are trying to wrap around it, though it is looking healthier than it was at times yesterday with the center closer to the showers and storms around it. It's still not a very well-organized tropical storm. Very typical looking system for this uh, intensity. West-northwest movement at 14 miles an hour, so it has slowed down quite a bit since yesterday, and that may be aiding in it looking a little healthier. The actual position of the storm, there's Jamaica right there. That is the eastern half of Cuba, and that is Haiti. So it actually missed Haiti in terms of the center of circulation. And now it looks like it's going to pass very close to the north coast of Cuba, of uh, Jamaica, I should say, and then make a northwest turn towards the eastern parts of Cuba. Where it crosses Cuba will really determine a lot for us in terms of the intensity, which is really the biggest issue with this forecast right now. Hurricane Hunter aircraft are in there this morning. They are continuing to fly around the storm, making fixes on the center and getting the pressure. So when we get the 8 o'clock update later this morning, then the 11, there'll be some new information as part of that. There could be adjustments to intensity and track based on what they find. Missions into the storm now will be almost continuous as we are watching for impacts of not only land masses, but potentially the United States. So here's where Elsa is in the overall weather pattern. So far in its lifetime, it's been steered by this huge, strong area of high pressure out in the Atlantic. That's what's been giving it that steady west-northwest movement and why we weren't really all that uh, unsure about where it was going to go to this point. Now a little bit more uncertainty work its way, working its way into the forecast, and that's because ELSA is exiting the east to west push from this area of high pressure. That's why it's slowing down. And soon it'll start to feel the west-southwest flow around this trough of low pressure across the Gulf of Mexico and southern United States. Hurricanes like to go through little weak areas in the atmosphere between pressure systems. So the most likely track will take it up through central or western Cuba and then into the eastern Gulf of Mexico towards generally the Florida Peninsula. That part of the forecast is actually pretty down. I mean, the exact track may be here still in question, but northwest turn, then north, generally towards Florida, uh, looks pretty set. And that's why the Hurricane Center forecast really hasn't changed much. Now, it does call for the storm to increase to about 70 miles per hour. Could be close to hurricane strength again later on this afternoon, but then weaken as it crosses Cuba uh, with then a passage through the Keys and then up somewhere towards Florida, up the West Coast, or maybe even Southwest Florida, uh, potentially impacting Tampa Bay on this track, certainly. Now, remember, this is this cone just guesses at the position of the center, the actual storm is much larger than the center. So even if the storm were to track out in the Gulf of Mexico, Tampa Bay would still get impacts. And in fact, if the storm tracks over or really west of us, that could be some of the worst conditions for us as it's the eastern side of the storm that's the strongest. And even if the storm were to go up the east coast of Florida, which is looking less likely now, we could still get effects on its west side because it's more than just the center. The storm is a much larger system, several hundred miles across. Closer look here at the track for Florida, uh, anywhere really from central into western Florida and even up towards the panhandle still could be impacted by this. Timing for the Keys is Monday. For us, it would be a deteriorating conditions on Tuesday and then the storm out of here by Wednesday. One important thing to note is that two of our big global models, the American and the European, almost completely dissolve the system over Cuba. Uh, these tropical systems, when they get over land, especially mountainous terrain, uh, they really fall apart fast. And when you're starting with just a moderate level tropical storm, uh, you don't have a long ways to go before you get down to just an area of low pressure. And that is certainly still in the forecast. Just because you see tropical storm icons here doesn't mean we're going to get a strong storm. And the Hurricane Center is basically just kind of 
giving an overall average of all the forecasts out there for the intensity here when they play 60 miles an hour uh, for the winds off our coast. The only part of Florida right now in their tropical storm watches or warnings or the keys, they are under the watches, including the keys and the dry tortugas. Uh, these could be extended north at the 11 o'clock advisory. In fact, if they would be extended, it would be at the 11 o'clock advisory today uh, up the south or southwest or even west Florida coast, at least a tropical storm watch and the keys will likely be upgraded to warnings later on today as that gives them about 24 hours worth of warning for the storm. So you see the models pretty tight on the track through Cuba, uh, then the crossing of the island, and then we'll have to watch what reemerges on the other side as far as our forecast here. The problem is, is by the time the system makes it off the coast of Cuba, we've got about 24 hours worth of warning. But the best guess here is just offshore. A couple models do go farther east, but it looks like this just offshore or near the West Florida coast for whatever low pressure remains from the system, that is gonna be most likely. Rainfall could be a big concern, of course, with this storm. Right now, some of the models picking up as much as maybe three to five inches of rain. If it were to be a moderate tropical storm for us, that's a concern because, well, we just haven't seen a lot in the way, we've been seeing a lot in the way of rain the last several days, so any more rain from a tropical system would not be good. As far as your 4th of July, some uh, showers out there, some thunderstorms in Citrus County this morning. Some more pop-ups are likely along the I-4 corridor later today. Temperatures 80s north, low 90s south, where the weather will be drier. If you're looking for drier, sunnier, hotter beaches today, head south of the Skyway. That's going to be your best bet. In Tampa, there likely will be some rain and storms before 1 o'clock. Then we mainly dry out during the afternoon with just a couple of downpours north of I-4. More rain north of I-4 today, less farther south. Tomorrow, if that system approaches, we switch to an offshore flow. So dry and sunny for much of Monday, and it could get hot before some showers and thunderstorms come at us from the east later in the afternoon and evening. That's the opposite of what we're doing today. If Elsa does have an impact on us in the seven day forecast, that would be on Tuesday with temperatures in the upper 80s. And it will continue to watch the shower and thunderstorm chances returning to more typical Florida weather by the end of the week. Another update in the eight o'clock hour on ABC Action News. And of course, more here on my social media channels throughout the day.